I'm Vivian Diniz with Investing News Network. Here with me today is Plateau Uranium CEO, Ted O'Connor. Ted, thank you for joining me. It's, it's a pleasure, Vivian, thanks. I wanted to start off a little bit by talking about the market, because as you know, things haven't been too good for the resource sector. However, it seems uranium has managed to do pretty well on its own. From your perspective, how have you viewed the market? Well, it's, it is still tough, but uh, like you mentioned, uh, relatively speaking, it's, uh, it's held up. And the reason is, um, you know, the spot uranium market has been thinly traded the last uh, several years uh, relative to the past. And, um, you know, the utilities still need uranium, so they're still willing to pay, and most people can't produce uranium for the current spot market price. Um, the average marginal cost of production is something on the order of $40. So no one, producers, want to sell uranium at, at a loss. So uh, that's, that's my opinion why the price hasn't, you know, plummeted further. But there's such a growing demand that the fundamentals say, you know, in, in a, it, it, within a few years, the uranium price, all the analysts are saying it'll be $65, $70 a pound, um, uh, or at least heading in that direction. And um, so we're, we're trying to, to work in that sort of stagnant market right now, but with the ultimate upside promise for sunshine, better days ahead. We've definitely been talking about that upside, better days ahead for a few years now. But um, looking on prices, Plateau just released a really, really positive preliminary economic assessment for the Makusani project. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, to start off with, we decided uh, against the analysts' forecasts to use a relatively conservative uranium price of $50 per pound, U308. Um, most of our peers in the same sort of stage of, of project uh, use a, a, a substantially higher price. And we, we chose this because we know how well the project performs technically from a leaching of the uranium perspective, from a low cost, shallow open pit, primarily mining uh, perspective. And uh, we decided to use $50 as, as an economic cutoff for our mining uh, scenarios. And then that carried through into the financial model. And, uh, you know, we've had incredible uh, results. We, we, we forecast that we'll be able to pr produce uranium uh, for $17.28 a pound, U308, um, over the life of the mine. Uh, and, and what's significant about this is our 6 million annual, sorry, 6 million pounds annual production a year. It's, it, it, it can move the needle as far as uh, being a, a strategic significant uh, future production center. Um, our our uh, after-tax uh, NPV using 8% discount is uh, over $600 million using $50 uranium. When we look at uh, using what our peers have been using, $65 per pound uranium price, um, the NPV is almost $1 billion. So it's, uh, it's a significant um, opportunity uh, with, with, with our project in Peru. So it definitely, this lower price is, is something that we're not seeing in more, in more companies. Uh, no, and, and some would argue it's because the, uh, the, the projects don't work. Um, that's not quite true. Um, I think every, everybody on the analyst side, whether it's the uh, uh, people at Dundee or Raymond James or Cantor Fitzgerald, um, see by the time 2019, 2020 come out, um, uranium should be 65 to $70. So that is the price that people have been using in their, in their economic studies. Um, we chose to be conservative to set ourselves apart from, uh, from our peers, but uh, also to say, look, this project works even in the, the mid to long-term price environment of $50. So um, I guess what I want to drive home is um, we have a great project and it'll, it'll be economic even under current spot price environment. We, we still have a positive over $250 million NPV using today's spot price of, of $34.75. So it seems also 
you kind of alluded to this a little bit that even when this project does go into production, it stands to be one of the largest uranium operations. Yeah, presently uh, uh, looking ar around the world at, at existing production centers, uh, it, we would be in the top five for annual production on, a, on an average basis. Um, the, you, you know, uh, the, the, the really low cost producers that, uh, that, that exist in Kazakhstan, for example, uh, they, they are one to, to four to five million pound annual production and, and the new ones are, are essentially smaller production, one million pounds, two million pounds a year, um, incrementally, you know, adding to the companies that are working their, uh, you know, production inventory. Um, this, this six million pound project we have, uh, you know, studied, uh, like I said, can move the needle for, uh, for uh, on the supply demand fundamentals uh, going forward. Okay, well, I didn't also realize that Peru was such a hot spot for uranium. Are you able to tell us a little bit about the geology of the project? What makes this area so good for uranium? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, companies, mostly junior, but, but also uh, uh, Cameco, I used to work with, with them for, for 20 years. Um, and I got them into Peru. So we had a lot of junior activity and, and one major uh, in a partnership in Peru in this one region called the Makassani Plateau. And work started about 2005, 2006. And over the years, uh, the individual companies, you know, drilled out deposits, found some things, um, and, and Plateau Uranium was able to consolidate all the defined resources under one company roof because all the projects are within you know, seven and a half to 10 kilometers of each other um, uh, where the known resources are. So we've put everything together. Um, and and the, re the reason these rocks, I guess, are, are, are so unique uh, and, and have such great leaching and, and mineralization, uh, I guess, characteristics is because how they were formed. The rocks are uh, essentially clean, uh, volcanic rhyolite rocks that are only about seven million years old and we've studied them and uh, at Queen's University in Kingston Ontario and um, we think that the uranium got there even though it's volcanic hosted it's in a surficial uh, sort of surface water environment we have melting glacial waters under cool high altitude conditions just like where the rocks sit now um, leaching the uranium from these volcanic rocks and precipitating it as this mineral called autonite, which is, uh, it leaches extremely well and, uh, and it's extremely clean. So because the mineralization uh, occurred at, you know, such low temperature surface environment conditions, essentially the same as what they are today, the uranium comes out incredibly uh, uh, inexpensively, and because they're near surface, we were able to delineate and 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 discover these deposits uh, at a relatively low cost. We're talking something like 35 cents per pound in the ground discovery cost, which is world class. The Athabasca Basin, for example, historically, even though they have giant deposits, um, their average cost of discovery is about a dollar per pound in the ground. Wow. You've used a word there a few times that I don't typically associate with uranium, maybe nuclear, but the word was clean. Mm. Now, this clean extraction, is this something that's typical for uranium or is this something that's specific to the plateau deposit? Well, um, it's, it's, it's not just specific to uh, plateau uranium's projects, but when I say clean, I mean because the rocks are essentially a volcanic equivalent of a granite. They're, they're basically just quartz, feldspar, glass, and, uh, and in our case, where the mineralization is, uranium. There is no uh, deleterious elements. Uh, some of the deposits in, in uh, northern Saskatchewan, for example, have uh, cobalt, cadmium, selenium, some other uh, minerals and elements that, uh, that can either that have to be taken care of in the process, can't be released to the environment, and they also can't show up in the uranium product. And all the test work we've done on the leaching and the precipitation of uranium says that um, our, 
our eventual product, which which we've made in a lab when uh, the chemical people had had done lab tests, uh, precipitating yellow cake. Um, it was totally in specifications uh, with with no no deleterious elements. So basically, what you're saying is it all comes down to low cost, low or cost. Yeah, exactly. You know, there's no arguing in uh, in in most commodities. Um, that grade is king. However, if you look at the gold industry and the the advent of, of, of heap leaching in a gold uh, environment, all of a sudden projects with one gram per ton um, can be economic. So it's not necessarily about grade. Grade can obviously helps. You know, in Saskatchewan, their ultra high grade deposits are among the lowest cost producers in the world, uh, next to Kazakhstan. And, um, you know, it, it grades important there. Uh, w what we're trying to show is it's not all about grade. In mm -hmm. the end, it is about economics, and, and we have a really good looking project. Well, it sounds good. I look, to hear for I look forward to hearing more. <laughs> well, thank you, Ted, again for joining me. I uh, appreciate it, Vivian. Thanks. I'm Vivian Diniz with the Investing News Network. Plateau Uranium trades on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol PLU. Thank you.